Welcome to Julian and Jenna's fucking podcast. Okay, so before we fucking start talking about anything, let me tell you why we're doing this. Um, I I don't watch podcasts. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't, I don't know. I don't, like, it's just not my world. But we did used to Ustream a lot. I personally used to Ustream for, like, years every Friday night. And then Julie and I used to Ustream together. And uh, we would just have sort of this core group which we're, we're on Ustream right now, so they can see us and they're going to help contribute to some of the conversation. But um, we had like a core group of people when we just sit there when we were like getting drunk, like now, like just having some drinks, kicking it. And we would just sit there and have the most epic conversations because epic. when I get drunk, when I get drunk, that's all I want to do is just get real chatty Cathy and talk to anybody and fucking like. But you. nobody knew about these conversations. Yeah. They'd happen and then no one would know about them. No one would know. So we asked on Ustream a long time ago if we made a podcast, if that would be fun or not. So we fucking, we got some mics. Like, yeah, this isn't the most professional setup ever, but we're just going to fucking do it live. You know what I mean? And like zero expectations like i don't i don't know what this is like like some of them might be fucking 10 minutes <laughs> some of them might be 3 hours yeah our goal is to not have any goals or rules or anything we just kind of want to get on the mic and make it more uh <laughs> lasting you know we'd have these conversations and then they'd mm. go away and we'd wake up and they'd never be existing yeah so we want we want these, them to exist yeah we want to and we want to come up with topics and you know discuss and whatever but like i said there's no rules we want to talk about what we talk about and and whatever happens happens but uh we're really excited to just like finally fucking do it like actually get it done yeah um yeah that's it that's all i got that's it so here come that podcast though what like i don't even like i'm not gonna fucking sit here and think about topics like, i just want to fucking go no but no but you did have some earlier yeah we want to have an idea that you talked about into- on Ustream. yeah you want me to start? Yeah. Go okay. Ahead, okay. Go so ahead. just so you know, we're on Ustream right now. We have like a fifteen group, fifteen person group. Like fucking uh, media section. I know right it's now. so sick. I took a picture. Um, uh, but okay, so here's here's one thing I, I thought would be a good topic. Um, can they hear us? They can hear us because we're on the computer audio, uh, so we're still talking into the computer. Yeah. So we're on like fifteen mediums right now. So many things happening. Um, we were talking about how kids today are in a completely different world than we were as kids or anyone was as kids because the technology that they're growing up with is unlike anything that anyone has ever grown up in. We all have it now at our current age, but growing up as a kid going through school, having these iPhones and iPads and access to the entire internet is something that's like just, this is the first time it's ever happened. So I kind of wanted to start the discussion. You know, a lot of people talk about how these kids are antisocial and they're not really learning like people, but could the argument be made these kids are getting more stimulation and they're becoming more advanced by growing up in this environment? Mm. What an interesting thought. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I think, honestly, the only argument that I can concretely make in terms of perhaps getting smarter is that when you're visually stimulated, it goes to the back of your brain. I think this is called your fucking occipital lobe. That's the part of your brain that controls vision and like what you see and it stimulates that part of your brain. I feel like because when you're a kid, the most visually, well, when we grew up, the most visually stimulating thing that you're going to see is like your fucking swing set and your slide and your fucking friends with their real faces and a book maybe, like some TV on occasion. Yeah. Uh, I was born in 1986 you were born in the 90s. Yep. But like, you know, we had to go outside. As soon as we come home, we fucking get outside. But kids now, you have video games, you have TV, you have an endless supply of things that are visually stimulating your brain. So I feel like it would be interesting in uh, 20 or 30 years to do some sort of scan on brains. Like, I think that that part of your brain will be much more efficient much more like maybe fucking I don't want to say bigger but like that's the that's what separates us from fucking apes right we we have more than just a primitive brain we have logic and reasoning and all of these things uh I I think that their brains will develop differently for sure and that they're nasty at fucking seeing things with their eyes honestly yeah. fucking hand eye coordination no, off the ta- charts yeah when they were talking about that uh just the idea of it when I was talking about it on the stream that's the thing like we don't know anything in th- the only thing in 30 years we're going to be able to okay do scans do some research because mm. it's happening right now mm. 
so we really don't know what what the effect is or, or anything like that but what's like what about how you know in a normal household today in the the century and the age and the technology age we live in a kid can learn about shit that's happening in the world so much faster than their parent yeah like the parents completely disconnected if you look at the kid who's on twitter who's on instagram who's on everything all day all the time yeah they're, they're more connected. connected yeah uh fucking <laughs> i remember you had to wait until the fucking news came on or you got a fucking newspaper like that is not news efficient whatsoever you yeah. need to know what's happening <laughs> when it's happening morning. well that's also something like like I, I don't know if you would consider what i do like just being on the internet like relevancy is sort of everything and if you're like days behind then it doesn't fucking nobody gives a shit yeah you, know you want to do a harlem shake if video you, yeah if you want to do a harlem no yeah let me put out a harlem shake video hi i'm 40 years old and i just found all these videos yeah. like it's it's not it's no longer no, relevant yeah, yeah. relevancy is sort of everything and kids are very much aware of that whereas the generation of our parents are still sort of on that train where it's like i think i get it but i don't know but like i don't know what you do yeah. but they they don't fucking they don't care yeah. either yeah because, well i feel like it's part of it that they're so hell-bent on staying with what they know right you you take for example someone like my mom for those of you on fucking ustream podcast video whatever my mom is on twitter 24 fucking 7. Mind you, this is the person that I had to change my real name from Jenna Mori, not my real name in real life, but on YouTube, I had to change my name from Jenna Mori to Jenna Marbles because she was trying to get a job at the time. And she was like, your last name's ruining all of my Google searches. So can you please like use a different name or like an alias? And now she is just all fucking in. She put all of her chips on that internet dick. She's all in. She tweets at the most ridiculous hours yeah. of the day. All right, let's start again. Yeah. I guess it only has a, a eight minutes. We, we cut out. We'll figure Te it technical out. We'll hit our stride, yeah. But, yeah, she, my mom, that's an example of someone that could easily blame their age their generation on not being able to understand but instead has sort of embraced it to their advantage yeah. her advantage being laughing yeah at the internet yeah it's not like i don't think my mom's really using it for any purpose yeah. no i mean but and then it's like her peers are probably just kind of like what is all this but she's like more connected than anyone her age yeah you know she's does on your mom have twitter yeah, but your mom it, has Instagram. Her, my mom has Twitter, but the tag is called Puppity Pup Pup. So, <laughs> so she made the Twitter for her dog, <laughs> and she's tweeted it for it probably like once for every year that she's had it. <laughs> well, it it definitely presents an obstacle when you're trying to be an adult, and someone's like, "Oh, what's your Twitter?" And you're like, "Oh, it's a Puppity Pup Pup." Oh, like, two, two P's in the middle, three at the end. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, what? Kids, someone on Ustream said kids can't spell anymore because of texting. That's actually a really great point. And I, when I did the Sirius XM fucking, uh, the YouTube 15 on Hits 1, not, not a plug, just telling you what I did today. Um, although a plug, because I love that fucking show. <laughs> um, we, uh, introduced, not introduced because it's on YouTube, but like for the first time on the show, it was... The Weird Al Yankovic fucking, what's the name of that song? Uh, Something words. Fancy. Word parody. Crimes. No, yeah. Word oh, Crimes. Okay. It was a Blurred Lines parody called Word Crimes and Weird Al. It's just the master of musical parodies. But he was sort of harping on the fact that kids have grown up with so much technology that they have become so reliant, dependent on it, so they don't spell correctly. But... My okay, that's you, we don't need to go there. Like we understand that that argument is valid. Yeah. But my argument is that well, just to play devil's advocate, that you know, it's a whole different language, the internet, and to get it and to use it effectively is you know strikes chords with people humor wise, especially humor. I guess yeah. humor is my main point. Yeah. Like if you can take you like I could sit down and write a perfectly grammatically perfect. You know what blog entry fucking thesis whatever the fuck you want me to write but to use it to your advantage for yeah. comedic purposes i think takes skill and why not embrace it because that shit's fucking hilarious 
the amount of ho hoops that I've had to jump through to try to explain, even in the simplest vein, what Spoderman is <laughs> to my mom is like baffling. Like, I know, I you know. You can't explain it. Right. You either get it or you don't. You either were, you know, you were involved in the process that made that funny or you're not. Spoderman is a Twitter, by the way, for those of you that don't Spoderman, know. Spoderman, please. It's a Twitter account, Spoder, literally, phonetically speaking, spelled Spoderman, P-L-S. Spoderman, please. Yeah. We're talking about our parents being internet savvy or not. Your dad's pretty internet savvy. Your dad, like, mind you, for those of you that don't know who Julian's dad is, I don't know why you would, but Julian's dad works at Maker, but he's leaving Maker. He left. He left already. Yeah, so Julian's dad was a stand-up comedian for years and years and then started a company on his own and then fucking With worked, his partner, but with yeah. With his partner and then fucking... Worked for Maker and I left Maker. Like that's pretty fucking internet savvy. You worked yeah. for Maker. No, he's definitely an exception to the rule. Yeah, of older people. Yeah. Does your dad tweet and fucking do all, um, all this? Social shit? media is not his thing. <laughs> he doesn't even follow me, which I don't even think he knows. <laughs> he might have unfollowed. I don't even know. He just uh, social media. Uh, that's what's weird because you can understand part of the internet, but not the whole thing. Because he's, right. you know, he's produced all kinds of YouTube stuff and he's worked on the internet per se for years and years, but he still tweets like a 12 year old. Every single tweet is yeah. like political and <laughs> you don't want to read it. Yeah. Like I don't think my dad has Twitter, but my dad has certainly grasped onto the fact that Facebook is a thing. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure my dad is a Facebook. Yeah. I think we're friends. I don't know. Yeah. But I also, this is why my dad has no validity though. My dad is a Google plus. Oh, God. My dad uses Google Plus, I think. What is yeah. that? <laughs> Dear Google Plus, stop making Google Plus happen. It's never going to happen. Stop making so, quiche happen. So fetch. <laughs> fuck you, miss. Fuck you, miss. I said, fuck you with a P. Fuck you with a P. For those of you that know what fucking Summer Heights High is. Then you will get that. Otherwise, we just looked crazy, but it's okay. Otherwise, you should watch that. It's a great fucking show. Fuck you, miss. Chris Lilly is a fucking genius. That's what. He's a genius, miss. He is. No, but back to what we were talking about, about kids being smarter now. Yeah. But what about, okay, so maybe your visual center of your brain might be significantly stronger, which has certainly been the trend over the last, I would say, 50 years. Like kids are becoming more and more, I don't know, good <laughs> at visual learning. Like when you talk, like just talk about like types of learning. You have audio learners, visual learners, that sort of thing. Like yeah. a tactile learner. Yeah. Like kids are becoming more and more skewed towards visual learners. I think yeah. because when you're a child, that's how you learn how to learn, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like this generation is learning how to learn through their eyes instead of any other way yeah. because it's just the most efficient at this point. Yeah. Because everything's available on your iPad and you have to fucking look at your iPad. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, it's fucking true. It's like that method of learning that you learn the most basic human functions they continue that method of learning everything. Right. And what just, kind of learner are you? Uh, I don't know how to answer that question. Say you were to study for a test yeah. or something. I'd have to write it down. I, every time I wrote my answers or wrote my notes, yeah. that action got it in my brain. See, that's exactly how I am. Yeah. And also, if I were to ever read a book or write a paper. I'm not one of those people that can sit there with motherfucking headphones listening to music. No. I can't do that. I can't fucking have TV. I need to be like in a silent little cubicle. Whereas I feel like maybe, this is just a hypothesis, that the generation that's younger than us, because they're so used to multitasking and multimedias at all times, like they're being bombarded across their brains, eyes, ears, everything yeah. constantly. And everything seems to move too slow and let's just this, 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 this. Yeah. Perhaps they would be able to write a paper with like a hurricane going on. Seriously. And like some smooth rap jams yeah. and like fucking yeah. music Yeah, you get it just from background. talking to kids. Like I have a younger stepbrother, Jacob. You know Jacob. And yeah. uh, having a conversation with him is just impossible. How old is Jacob? Just for people he's, that don't uh, know. He's 15. Yeah. He's 15. He's going to be a sophomore in high school. But having a conversation with him is one of the 
most challenging things because uh, he, first of all, he talks so fast mm. and he talks at a speed where his brain moves, mm-hmm. but no one else's. So he talks really fast, but at the same time, he'll move from topic to topic to topic and you'll be like, wait a minute. Uh, I was saying this and he was like, oh yeah, no, I know. I answered that. Like, well, yeah. and he moved on and it's just like, it's not even something you can learn. It's just how you brain grows. There's it's just like his so, brain yeah. has been on. There's computers. so many synapses happening. They all connect to each other in his brain, but not necessarily in your brain. Yeah. Although I, well, just to say this much, he's your family member, yeah. so it's difficult to connect with him because you're trying. Well, stepbrother, he's you're trying to connect with him in, in a bonding, male yeah. bonding brother level. Yeah. But for me, I feel like when I talk to Jacob, I since I'm an outsider, I'm not in the family. I can connect with Jacob because I, I appreciate the ADD because sometimes that's how my brain works and yeah, no, it's, I, it's how teenage I brain know, works. I see it, yeah. Absolutely. I feel it. Yeah. Uh, in like 30 seconds, I think it's going to stop, but I'm not sure because it might not. Stupid. So. All right. Just in case we have <laughs> like 10 seconds. <laughs> Here's a break brought to you by our sponsors. Fucking nobody because ain't nobody got mo fucking time for that. Dick. Our sponsor is whatever's in it our It didn't cup. stop. It's still going. Well, it might stop in like five seconds. Oh. Three. I don't know. We'll what see. about the camera? Is the camera going to stop? The, uh, the camera always changed settings. So oh, that okay. might never stop. Ever. Ever. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, if it gets past 20 minutes and a half, we'll just keep going because... That's interesting. For Someone on Ustream said, for me, it depends on the subject, which I think is valid. Like, if you're maybe if you're doing something that really challenges you mentally, you yeah. can't have a lot of distractions. For me personally, like, I was nasty at science. Yeah. So, like, yeah, bring on all the distractions or something that's enjoyable. But maybe for something that's really challenging, you can't have all these things interfering in your brain. Yeah. What's, like, your worst subject, Julian? <sighs> I think one of my like three C's in college came from stats. <laughs> Statistics stats. are the devil. Stats, yeah. Like awful. Yeah. We had to take a lot of stats for psychology. Not cool. It's just hard. My my whole thing with stats is you, okay, you so struggle. So math. So you're math. saying math. Math. Yeah. yeah. You struggle so hard on one thing, right? It's like a formula or a concept and you're struggling forever on it, right? right. And then one day you're like, Oh my God, I get it. And you're fucking the man and you're writing all these formulas and you're like, yes. And the test comes, you get an A and then you move on. And the next chapter is like, okay, this is kind of like it, but it's nothing like it. And you think it's exactly the same, but it just fools you. Yeah. And then you have to learn on top of that in a weird way. I just could never do that. I was, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I totally understand that because it, it, if you fall behind even a little bit in math, you're just sort of fucked. And it's sort of the same thing with science. And, well, languages too. But in my opinion, the one thing that my brain just cannot do is fucking history. Like, I, in high school, one quarter, I got a D in history. Like, that's, you know, it's a, it didn't make up a per, huge part of my grade because yeah. it's a quarter. Yeah. But even in college, I made it a point. I was like, I'm going to study all day, every day yeah. to get an A in history. And I did. But I had to work my ass off for that yeah. shit. Because unlike math or science, history doesn't make any motherfucking sense to me. Okay? I'm like a logic reason person. Yeah. You can't reason out, like, people and events and dates and names. Like, there's no reasoning. It's yeah. just pure memorization. It's pure memories. And it, it really means is, yeah. nothing to me. For the most part, you know, you learn about all the basic types of history in high school and that sort of thing. Okay, that's great. I can get that. Fine, sort of. Except for that one quarter when I really could fucking give a <laughs> shit less. But, like, once you get into college, you're like, none of this means anything to me. Yeah. I hate all of this. Yeah. I hate everything. Yeah. You have a hard time bringing history into something that would even come close to mattering in your life. Yeah, No. I mean, it's not like you're going home and being like, okay, I learned the quadratic formula today. I know how to ride my skateboard now. It's not like it <laughs> translates that directly with other things, but I feel like history is so behind you. It's so, it's a game of memory. It's not happening. It's nothing like, with math, you can build on it. You can learn it. You can keep going. History, right. it's done. Well, okay. So if you frame it that way, history is a game of memory, in my opinion. So is languages. But why does that make languages so much easier than history? 
Maybe it's not for a lot of people. A lot of people are great at history. Like, yeah. they're just nasty at it. Yeah. But I think it's because they have an emotional attachment to history. You yeah. have to actually feel something when you you're learning care. about it. Yeah. But fucking, for languages, like, what do you do? You just say it over and over again. Like, that's a game of memory that yeah. I can potentially master. Yeah. I took Spanish for, like, eight years. <laughs> I took Russian for one. We yep. cr I crushed it. It was yeah. great. Because it meant something. It yep. meant fun. Yeah. Like, what do you learn? The colors? The shit in your room? Like, all right, great. This stuff means to something yeah. to me because I can see them. Yeah. In maths, plural, we don't learn how to sort wages what, or anything to do with the real world. That's very true. And I felt like I read an article recently about how colleges were going to start offering sort of like a real world competency class or course, which seems... Why does that not exist? Purely logical... Like I don't, I don't currently own a house or anything like that. But I, I've been trying. I've been trying to educate myself. Like basic finance, uh, but no, taxes. but nobody taxes. You just sort of just like you're just are expected your to know it. Yeah, you are. And most people's parents, I feel like I'm, I can speak freely about that and openly. Most people's parents aren't helping them do their taxes. Their parents are like, sucks to be an adult. Like I, I don't want to do my taxes. I yeah. certainly don't want to help you do your taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fuck you. Yeah. No, I, I, it, it's incredibly insane. You learn sex ed, which isn't even sex ed. It's a joke of a class. You learn... It makes everything just a little bit weirder. You're, you're fucking... At least in my school district, you're forced to do PE. Yeah, we had to. Okay. But you know... You were allowed to opt out. We, well, were, we were only allowed to opt out for one... You can only quarter. opt out if you were part of a sports team. Right. That was That's what I'm saying. But we were only allowed to opt out for one quarter. Yeah, that you told me about it. So you had to be in P for the rest and of And you had to... Yeah, you had to be playing sports. But sport. I just don't get it. Like, you had a language requirement. You had sometimes physics, sometimes English. I, you never had a required class. And there doesn't even exist such a class where you have to learn basic finance. Right. Just you know, basic, you know what, just you know what, what it, <laughs> you know what existed for us? Oh, they have personal finance classes. What the fuck? No, we had home economics, which was the closest thing to like a very old school. Uh, oh, this is how you cook a grilled cheese. Like you learn yeah. how to cook and sew yeah. and basically be a housewife. But that's the closest thing to any applicable, like real world knowledge that you're going to learn but it's not even geared school. towards it it's, just, it's not geared it's not it geared toward anything yeah. did you have home ec did you have to take that i didn't have a home ec i had ec we had economics we had micro and macro and okay we had yeah we had economics too i'm talking about home ec. No, we didn't have home ec. we did not have home ec. am i the only one that had to fucking take that like maybe that's outdated at this point don't have sex or you're pregnant <laughs> until you die um no, yeah, I, I've heard of home ec. I know people who have had home ec. I just never went to a Did school. Did you have to take that. shop or anything? Uh, I took wood shop. <laughs> you did. I took wood shop <laughs> in eighth grade. <laughs> and and the teacher for wood shop. I love shop, how it's not shop and like you get to do work across mediums. It's just it's wood, wood shop. shop. It's wood shop. <laughs> and the teacher who taught wood shop, he would go to the shack and have a drink every Thursday night, and Ted would go and hang out with him. <laughs> My Ted, stepdad. Ted is Julian's yeah, stepdad. He's awesome. Who is awesome. Um, but yeah, I took wood shop. That's the closest thing to shop I ever you took. You know, for all those people out there that are looking for a career in shopping. Hey, some I built wood. a I don't know what you're saying. I built a badass calendar. There were like long blocks for the month. A and then wooden other blocks. calendar? Yeah, wooden calendar. It was like a shaped like a like a little dresser. And then there was like long blocks that had mark it had all the spring monks on one. Sounds very Mayan. A, you had to change it like every, like probably three times a day. Sounds like an advent calendar. I was so proud. Made out of wood. I also made a box. Wow. And if you guys ever watch Breaking Bad, we you did. know how important that is. We do. Um, a box. You know what I did get to take in high school? This is funny because I just did this video this week that was saying like, I got drunk. But for those of you that haven't seen it, I got drunk and painted a picture because I was sort of, I struggle with every day like that I took a sort of path through college where I'm like, all right, I need to like have a job at the end of this. Although I would have taken art school had I thought I was any good at art. And I, I just haven't had enough training in art to ever pursue that as yeah. anything. So I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take myself to art school. But um, what I did get to take in high school that I thought was really cool was jewelry making. What? Which is, it was so fantastic because we just like, jewelry we making. cut metal and then you, you spend, I don't know. Two plus weeks, like uh, sandpapering it down so no. that it doesn't cut the fuck out of your fingers. 
Mm-hmm. Like you'd make a pendant, but like in some geometric shape that you yeah. really like that was also easy to cut with a saw. Yeah. But regardless, it was very cool that you learn how to, you know, use your pliers and just make some motherfucking jewelry. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. That is cool. I, I, I'm the closest. I mean, it's a wood shop. My brother took ceramics. Ceramics was really popular. Ah, I didn't get to take ceramics. School. And I also didn't get to take fucking photography <clears throat> or any sort of film or well, any sort of anything. Here's the deal like with our, our program. Um, uh, they had, ceramics was like really popular. Yeah. Everyone would take ceramics. All I never took it. All the stoners would take ceramics. All the stoners would take ceramics. I never I, took it. It's not my first rodeo. I t- <laughs> you know what's up. I took um, wood shop in middle school for art in high school. Uh, what did I? I can't even. I, I can't even put my finger on what I took as my art elective in high school. Oh, okay. I took a, a video. See, this is why I'm such a natural on like editing things. And before I even went to college, I took a video editing class. See, and we were using. Fair. No, but listen, we, we were stuck in this like bunk ass, stanky, dark little room in the back of campus. No one ever fucking cleaned it. In high school? In high school. Yeah. I was a sophomore. And uh, we had these, we had a teacher and a TA. And I'm pretty sure the TA and the teacher like, slept in a cot together at the back of the room and they were both weird dudes sexy Sex- oh they were dudes yeah, they were both weird dudes, which is okay dudes it's plural super creepy <laughs> anyway uh, but they were just so mean and anal about everything probably because our class was like full oh, of degenerates that made their that. lives hell but we learned because it's an elective so yeah. you're getting the, yeah. the creme de la creme the, taking the creme your fucking classes yeah. every semester <laughs> and I, I, I guess uh, have you seen Samo 911 no. Oh, wait. I think it's so. on my. It's something I'm that you made. Tagged in yes, YouTube. Yes, I have. I have. That was in that class. Oh, okay. So we made. We le- We literally just. I mean, probably the rest of the class learned. Not to interrupt you, but someone just commented on Ustream. I had to take tractor sh- safety. We legit had to learn how to drive small tractors. That's dope as fuck. That's dope as That's fuck. That's dope as fuck. Continue. With- and we did all these video stuff. We did. We learned on. You like didn't a, want to do ceramics because you're not a stoner. I just didn't want to. It probably. Feels weird. Yeah, it's just not right. For those of you that don't do drugs, like Julian and I, it feels weird hanging out with people that do a lot of drugs. That is like, right. Is there something wrong with me? I wish I could. Yeah. I just don't. I don't I'm like already, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Um, anyway, I took this class and like we edited and honestly, I feel like I taught myself most of what I learned. I just got the opportunity to use the programs, which is what helped. Yeah. But my sh- like my thing about art in high school is I there was this AP art program. Uh-huh. Okay, it was called AP Art, uh-huh. and you could take it as a junior or senior. And you get and college credits. You get college credits. Right. And but basically, it's like. The only reason I wanted to take it is because every other fucking art class was a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I spent a lot of time drawing. I could probably put together something that's like half-assed mm-hmm. that, you know, can be viewed sort of as art. So I spent a fucking long time, like probably a month, you know, day in and day out, try to just like work on these drawings and paintings. And I did. You had to put, put for your portfolio, put like 12 pieces in together and I, I thought was, this was an editing class no, no no I'm talking about this is after that okay I, th- this is just my art experience in high school Got my it. art okay. elective experience but uh so I bought this thing this pad and I just fucking went to work and you I went was ham. went ham and my mom still has pro- probably hey, your mom's, his mom's an artist so my mom's an artist um that's like more than welcomed in your household especially if you needed help or something it was probably a big reason why I did it yeah but I spent so much time yeah on these paintings, on these drawings. Yeah. And I submitted it. And I was yeah. like. Yeah. And. APR time, motherfuckers. Is this to get into the class? Get into the class. Okay. And. Rejected. God. You are not good enough to be in our high school oh. art program. And I was like, okay, you better give me my fucking portfolio back. Because that oh. is like. And I was just like, fuck that. Yeah. Like, f- like not, a, not that I ever really thought about going to college for art. But right. after that, I was like. What the fuck is the right. point? If, I if, poured everything into I know, these pieces. I know, I hear you. If, if this is your world, I don't want to be a part of this world. Yeah. I have. I feel like I have a similar experience. My first experience with any sort of entertainment, like media, mm-hmm. I took a class in college my freshman year called Mass Media, yeah. which is just where you sort of learn about, I don't know, fucking media. Yeah. I feel like I had sort of a similar experience to that where like your first experience sort of ruins it for the rest of, the, of your life, yeah. if that, or unless you want to revisit it. In college, my freshman year, I was sort of undecided, you know, mind you, I was 17 years old, but I decided, okay, I'm going to take one class in, like, media, mm-hmm. or, like, uh, whatever, I guess you just call it media, right? Yes, me. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever. No, but what's that major that I'm trying to 
pinpoint uh, graphic design no 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 more way more general than that media law i don't know no not law media just like media i don't know media like sub sub genres of this major i'm thinking of are like pr marketing advertising television film art whatever mm -hmm. okay never mind irrelevant but i had decided i I didn't know where I wanted to go, so I took one psychology class and one media class. Yeah. And super entry level, uh, I would go to my psychology class and I would get a little bit annoyed that everyone thought that it was story time yeah. uh, to talk about their own personal things, but I found them a little bit more tolerable than the people in my media class. Like, I didn't pour my heart and soul into it and get rejected. Yeah. I just literally thought it was like Satan's reincarnation of human beings into this class and I just couldn't stand it. I could not stand the people and I was like, I'm not cut out. Communication, thank you, Bridget, thank you. Communications, whatever, that's the overarching. That's the major, that. got it. <laughs> I, I just couldn't stand the idea. Like if that's the world, I don't wanna be in it. Yeah. I don't wanna be a part of yeah. it. There's no way that I could ever work or just research, do more than a class on yeah. just this because I hate these people. I hate everything about yeah. it. And it sort of soured me until after college I started doing YouTube and I was like, no, this is really, really cool and fun and I like it. Yeah. I wish that I had spent my time getting an education for it, but like, I can't, I can't stand it. I can't do it. Yeah. But that, that experience of like pouring your everything and then just getting flat out rejected is yeah. terrible. It's rough. You just realize that you don't, you don't, you tried it and you, you you're like, no. That's so sad. Julian, it's okay. It's you want to hear something cool though? My brother, Marlon, <laughs> he, uh, given that he's living at home now for the summer, um, what you do in college, it's not going to slam him for that. No, that's fair. Um, he moved back into his old room because Sarah left, my cousin, and he. She did? She moved to Santa Barbara. Okay, anyways, we're, uh, sorry. I told you that. I, she left a couple weeks ago. But uh, he found one of my paintings, drawings, painting. No, it was painting that uh, that I did for my AP art portfolio application in my mom's studio. And he put it up on his wall. He likes it. Because it's a picture. It's like a three-part picture of a catcher throwing a guy out. Yeah, that's dope. It's pretty sick. I was proud of it. Maybe that's why your art teacher or whoever said yes or no to students didn't like it. Because they suck at sports. Yeah, because they were like, ah, I don't know. This is a sports picture, and I just don't want to deal with you. <laughs> I spent so much time getting shit on for my horrible sports yeah. skills. Meanwhile, someone else drew a stick figure hanging itself and got accepted. Oh, it's so deep. <laughs> you need to be in our class. There's so much symbolism. It's so deep. <laughs> it's and it. I like how you left that line crook. Oh, no, it's just because you're a shitty artist. <laughs> Fuck you, Miss. Art is so subjective, though. You know what so, I mean? So, it's so subjective. I thought like English and writing was subjective. Art is the most subjective thing. Right, because you could world. call anything art. Go to an art museum. Yeah. You'll see it. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be like, wait, what? What? That, they, what when they have the prices next to it, there's like a picture of a door, and instead of windows, there's just like cats, and then it's like, okay, $80,000. Right. Have you seen the documentary, uh, something about, I think it's Banksy? I forget the name of it, but it has to do with Banksy, the uh, artist. Banksy's, I like Banksy stuff. It's a documentary. No? I've never seen it. No, okay. I've never. But it basically, there's a, another artist that's sort of fucking, you know, fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. And he does. He makes it. He just sells absolute crap, like rip off shit. I forget the name of him in the documentary, but it's, yeah. it's just a perfect example of modern art. Yeah. You know, you just put like this weird spray can spray paint painting can't right there yeah oh my god i can't even speak spray paint can't that's art buy it you need to this is like making weird noises is that what that was yes oh sorry i'm um, sorry cribble texted he said to do that i'm just listening to cribble he said close down any unneeded programs oh you like your phone yeah <laughs> there's too many things going on now oh. we're not having a conversation sorry i'm trying to fix the podcast so it works can I pause, can we take a break really quick so I can set a setting? So sure. Is, all right, we'll be right back. All right, well, uh, we're this is gonna be a lot smoother in the future. We're not gonna have a stop and and dick like this. Yeah. Incredible. I think GarageBand might be a little safer. The thing is, Pro Tools is probably better. It's just it's very complicated when you're first learning it. Yeah, we'll just need to figure out the settings. 
Yeah, we'll work on it. It'll be a lot better. Hello there. Hi. We Hi. Were, we were talking about stuff. And what was that stuff? We are talking about fucking art. What was it? Yeah. School. Sonia wants to have my pieces of art. What pieces of art? From your portfolio? <laughs> Dope. Dope. I told her I'd twit pick at her when I next saw them. Really? Mm-hmm. If I even find them, if they mm-hmm. exist. When I was in high school, I got to take one art class, and it was really great, and I was really good at drawing. Um, but because my dad's really good at art. I didn't know that. Yeah, my dad's, like, incredible at art. And there's – I forget who it is. I think it's my mother's father was actually a cartoonist mm. for a long time. But – so they're sort of, like, create my, – my aunt's a painter. Yeah. My aunt won an Emmy for a news broadcast. I know that. Like, there's art – and creativity in my veins but when i took the class in high school she was like i want to strongly encourage you to continue with art but i couldn't because i had to continue with clarinet <laughs> clarinet before everything <laughs> clarinet's such a cock block my god I can't think of a bigger cock block than clarinet the recorder that's a bigger cock true block than the no in my school though you had to take an instrument from fourth grade you, can I tell you a sad story? French horn. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Sad story. Um, so we have to, in fourth grade, we had, well, how old are you in fourth grade? You're a child. Seven. Seven. So, like, they were giving us these demonstrations of all the instruments. The music teachers were like, these are the woodwinds. These are the brass instruments. They're all different teachers. And then, so I was so, like, taken by the sounds and that they were so good. And, like, oh, my God, I was so overwhelmed. And so after every teacher did their little intro of a group of instruments, they would be like, if you want to try out for this instrument, because you would try out for, like, two instruments. And then at the end of the day, you would decide what you wanted to play. Until 10 fucking grade mind you they don't tell you that then they don't tell you that you're like investing in an instrument for a long ass time <laughs> how many years is that eight yeah four yeah. five six seven eight nine ten okay like seven yeah. fucking years so i was sort of just overwhelmed and i was like oh man i really like the clarinet i like that mo fucking clarinet <laughs> but i could get down with that flute but what i really want to do is play those drums so the drum guy did his intro and then he was like and i was so like overwhelmed with the drums like i loved them and he they tell you what room to go to in the music room to try out for them and then they tell you based on your natural ability what your chances are of being good but you can pick whatever instrument you want strings fucking whatever so when the guy did the drums i was like That's my calling. That's my (laughs) life. And mind you, I was an incredibly shy, terrified of authority child. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I like that clarinet. I like that flute. So I went to the woodwind room. I remembered where that was. I remembered the lady with her bangs and whatever. And I tried out for the clarinet. (laughs) She was like, you're amazing at flute. Clarinet, eh. And I was like, I don't want to play the flute. That's weird. Like You carry that little case to school. I don't like that. I want to play the clarinet. That's a little better. But can you please point me to where the drums are? No. I get finished playing the clarinet and it goes beep, 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 time's up, gotta fucking go to your next class. And then the next day, we decided which instruments we played. And there was already a drummer. And I never tried out for the drums. I never even got to. It was honestly. This is high school? No. Middle school. I was seven. Oh, okay. I was just elementary school. You could have been the best percussionist in ever. I I could have been Sheila E. I never got to try out for the drums, and I, I still to this day, I'm so torn up about it because little seven year old Jenna, just you know, that's heartbreaking. I was really sad. You needed to fulfill, you needed to get on those drums. And then I, you know, quietly and diligently and obediently played clarinet until tenth oh, grade. That's fucked. They kept you in a box. You needed to be on those drums. I can't hold Jenna down. Why are you crying? Hold Jenna down like that. I just want to play the drums. Like, think about, like, I have a lot of energy. A lot of, like, I want to just bang on shit, you know? I do know. No, I had to sit there like this. <laughs> do you have uh, a way to get any sort of percussion set here? No, I played, uh, when I went to, like, an all-girls camp, I played uh, bongos for a mm. hot minute. I was really good at that. I crushed it. It's with your hand, right? Yeah. yeah. I get crush legs. those. Get legs, get hands. Get hands. That's dope. But if ever, if I'm given a second opportunity in life to learn some drums, yeah. I will. 
You I also played to. piano for a long time. You played French I, horn. I played the, the court recorder because I did it whenever. Everyone has to. Uh, I played the French horn for a year. Ooh, girl. I hated it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fucking, you want to hear a funny story about fucking French horn? I told this the other night. I tell it all the time. I'll hear it. I like your story. But, um. Yes, I, I play the drums on rock band. Yes, I do. <laughs> I never had rock band. I only had guitar hero. Mm. Um, you should do a video playing the clarinet. I would if my mom would fucking send my clarinet to me. Every year my mom's like, I'm going to send you your clarinets. You Debbie, have it. Get Debbie. off Twitter and send us the clarinet. Debbie, 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 put the Twitter machine down. Send me my clarinet. Put your swag down and send the clarinet. <laughs> but the the French horn, um, I, it's fine. It's whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was renting a room in my apartment in Boston, and mind you, this is like I don't I don't know in square feet feet how to describe this, but yeah. like slightly larger than a closet. This is a four bedroom apartment in the teeniest tiniest little fucking. The whole apartment is a closet, and this is a closet within a closet. It's closetception, mm -hmm. and the, everything's shitty. The floors are shit, gross, like disgusting, a hell hole. And so I was renting this little closet room because we just need someone to live there. The rent was cheaper than the rest of the house, yeah. fairly, because yeah, yeah. it's, you know, half the size of a regular room. Yeah. And the regular room's tiny. My room was tiny. So this fucking girl comes over. She's got a notepad, right? Like, she's taking notes. She's taking this very seriously. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm just, you know... She's asking me all these questions, and I'm like, look, bitch, this is a shitty dump of an apartment. Like, what are you looking for? What, you, what is your budget? 300 to $400 a month? Like, are you looking yeah. for some fucking luxury? No. Like, you get what you get. This is what we're offering you. And uh, so then, after I take her around the whole fucking dump of a place, she looks at me and goes, you know, after she asked 10,000 questions, she goes... Um, so I play the French horn, which is one of the louder brass instruments, and I need to practice approximately three to six hours a day. Is that going to be a problem? And I was like, get out. There's the door. Get the fuck out. Like, I'm not even going to entertain the idea of filling my room right now if you are my option. Get out. I'm not going to listen to your motherfucking French horn. Such ever. an afterthought. Is that going to be a problem? Is that going to be a problem? Yeah, fuck you. Like, I think we need to disclose up front if you play loud musical instruments for six hours a day is a long time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like a fourth of the day. Imagine, okay, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Like, I'm assuming three to six means weekdays she practices three hours. Weekends she practices six hours. Imagine all day, like, you wake up. This bitch fucking wakes up at 930 in the morning on a Saturday because you know she's not going out. No. This girl was like high V. She's not going anywhere. <laughs> She's high V. She's like She's going to wake up early as fuck on Saturday morning and you're going to get woke, woken up every weekend yeah. for a year. Yeah, that's grounds for murder. Yeah. Mm. I could understand murder yeah, in that that's, circumstance. That murder is understandable. Murder is relatable. day 296 yeah. of that. No. It's past just... No, you're done. Get That's, out. Yeah, get out. So that was my my sort of inside joke to myself. Every time I wrote a fucking Craigslist post thereafter, I was like, uh, you know, I'd write the my piece about the apartment in a nice comical way. Uh -huh. Like, we live in a shithole. Come live in our shithole. Like, whatever. And then at the bottom, in all caps, we would be like, no French horn players, <laughs> which most people interpreted to be very funny. Which I appreciate it. That's that is fun. That's like, like you gotta write your Craigslist post yeah. with intention. So mine was always always humorous. Yeah. And then you draw That's, the right people. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. The best roommates I ever had I found on Craigslist. It's like it's automatically attracting people with your sense of humor. Yeah. People that don't get it don't apply. Yep. Don't apply. You won't even have to deal with them. No. Nope. They'll be like, what is this? Is this the English? I thought I knew English, but this is not it. Well, that girl looked at that post maybe in the future when she got kicked out of her next apartment and was like, well, I guess I play French horn. And it explicitly says, no French horn player. That is the best idea I've seen. Kill her with the French horn. <laughs> Kill her with the French horn. Oh, my God. Uh, yes. Yep. You played the French horn. I played the French horn for a year. And I have a story. Yeah. Uh, I sucked. 
I basically kept quiet in all of our concerts because I was so. Did you so, airplay? Like when I you airplayed. blow into I, it? Oh, I, I was the fucking airplay king. What do they call that helicopter? I don't know. I don't. They call it Julianing because I did it all the time. <laughs> I had like three concerts my whole year. What I think it was like seventh grade, and I did not black have dance, white shirt? the balls. Oh yeah, that's the band uh, concert attire. Yeah, the white shirt. Yeah, the white t-shirt too. Everybody. Um, and you sit down. I had uh, this story. Okay, uh, my friend, uh, who I played the French horn with, I had two friends who I knew. You had a friend that you played the French well, horn. Well, they were they were my friends before the French horn, and okay, they were my okay. friends after the French right. horn. But uh, yeah, his name was Dax. I also knew a guy named Joe. We both, we all three, kind of knew each other. Yeah. So we played. We were the French horn, you know, friends or whatever. Your dog's crying. Um, <laughs> uh, Dax, he, you know, one time I needed to borrow his French horn. Because I didn't Why? have mine. I didn't have mine. Why do you need to borrow a well, French horn? Well, I went back and forth from my mom and dad's house, and it was hard to fucking remember. I okay. was just flustered one Sorry, day. Sorry, I shouldn't have assumed it was that easy. I was flustered one day, okay? Mm. All right. Um, so I didn't have my French horn, and I needed his. I needed his. So I, I just remember taking his French horn, thinking, Aww. okay, this is his. It's not like it's the school's, and I can just hide it when yeah. I return it. It's his, and he Aww. cared enough to get his own, and I fucking dented it. Well, maybe his parents are rich, and they can just buy French horns like there's no tomorrow. Dax. I had to rent mine, my clarinet. Most yeah, no, no, rent I rented their, mine, yeah, too. Mine was rent rented. Instrument. I don't want to fucking buy it. The mm. thing is like a couple hundred bucks, man. Um, no, Dax is a good guy. I played baseball with him all through high school. We knew each other mm. forever. Um, but Does he still play French horn? No. So, it's not that no, sad. No, he doesn't. It's not sad. Everything ended up for the best. <laughs> it ended up great. But I just, it's like one of those things. Here, well, let's go back to this. Before we get to the book thing, can we stop on embarrassing stories as a kid? Yes. Okay, because this, there's, this there's leads this... right into that. What? I, well, this is the type of thing that you talk about. Story, yeah, the, the yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Julian needs to tell you his embarrassing. You guys have seen, I've done videos in the past about my embarrassing stories. And I, there's just this one story that Julian tells from high school. Is it the just, locker one? It hits me right in the feels. No, it's not the locker one. You know the one that I'm talking about. Yes, that one. Please tell it. I'm fucking. What? Which one is it? The dance. The dance? Yeah, the girl that asked. Oh, her. yeah. Okay. God. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. All right. Okay. This this story just hits me right in the feels. Tell it. All right. This is a girl. Um, her name was Haley. And uh, I was young. Uh, well, I, I don't think I was. It was middle school because that was the three most awkward years of my entire life. Was uh, it middle school? It was middle, it was middle school. It was okay. at Lincoln. Not like um, I know. <laughs> I wasn't there. Um, I'm pretty sure... There were outside parties telling me to ask her to the dance. I didn't really do it on my own. I had people telling me to. So I was like, okay. That's how middle school works. I was like, hey, come to the dance with me. She was like, okay, yeah. And she loved, she was like happy as shit. And she like went to her friends and was like talking about it. And so here's how it went for me. I had PE sixth period. So I would go home after PE, which would mean I would go home in my PE clothes. But the way the dance worked, because we were all so young and irresponsible, was the dance was like maybe an hour and a half after the last bell of school. So you could feasibly stay at school and just go straight to the dance, which I did. But what I would do is I would play PE, I would play basketball at like PE, and then the bell rang, and I would play a little more basketball Yeah. after, after the school. bell. After yeah. school. And uh, I would have my mom come a little later, because I wanted to play basketball with my friends. Um... And the dance day came. It was like a Friday, and it was no different. I was just like, okay, yeah, I know that there's something I have to be at in the gym or whatever. I'll, I'll do that later. So I play basketball. <laughs> Two hours passes. I come over to the gym, like with my friends. I meet up with some friends, and <laughs> I'm wearing my PE clothes, which are like probably like four or five sizes too big on me because I'm <laughs> a kid. And uh, I meet up with my date, and she walks in the door. Did up to the nines. Like she's wearing a prom dress, yeah. heels, makeup, hair. She's all the way full she's out. She's all the way all done the up. fuck up. Like, and Julian just in his gym clothes. I'm in, his, I'm in my gym clothes. I'm wearing my shitty, shitty sneakers, my un, unwashed like shorts and t shirt. Because you don't wash them. <laughs> yeah, you leave no, them in your you locker. Leave them in your locker. Um, I'm like, hey. She's like, 
hey. And I could see, like, the excitement sink like, in her disappointment. look. Yeah, just complete disappointment. And But I don't know if I told you even this part. Her mom's a photographer, so she would take a camera everywhere to take pictures. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge <laughs> photographer. So we need she, to find those pictures, Julie. They're, they're, I, could, I probably could find them. I know how to. I need yeah. them. Um, so, yeah, that's that's how I disappointed the first girl I ever truly disappointed. I See, showed up in my PE that's just so clothes. sad because you can't, like, there's so many times in your life where, you know, you should feel bad. I would, like, I don't want to say, like, you should feel bad. I'm saying, like, in theory, you know, you feel bad, but, like, when you tell it again or when you think about that moment you just feel so, so bad, bad. <laughs> and when the first time that julian told me that story about you know meeting up with this girl that's of course just thinking that this is a dance and we're like oh my god i got asked to the dance and i'm gonna dress up and i'm gonna dress and for those of you girls out there you know how long this shit fucking takes doing your nails and your hair and your makeup and finding a dress finding a dress alone could be a weekend long process god. So she just was so all fucking ready, and then you're just like, of course, you're acting like a an eighth grade or seventh grade boy. You just show up in gym clothes because you just, like, why would I do it? I'm else? such an asshole. You're not, though, because that's how fucking yeah. boys are. Do you it's, know what I mean? Yeah. Because to you, that makes total perfect sense. I didn't think twice about it. As it was, to her, yeah. it makes total perfect sense no, yeah. that going to a dance means no. I need to look like <laughs> Cinderella. <laughs> it was just such the icing on the cake, though, that her mom was like a professional oh, photographer God. with the just camera. An add insult to injury. Yeah. You're like, now you got to take 50 million pictures yeah. of us like this. Yep. It yep, hits yep, me yep. in the field. <laughs> I told you to start. We got to talk about books. Okay. Whatever. But yeah, yeah. I told, uh, just quickly yeah. to tell your story. The one story from me that reminds me of that sinking, horrible feeling. It's nothing. It means nothing. Me and my brother, like, we used to love to eat toaster strudels because they're <laughs> so good. They're fucking amazing. We did like Pop Tarts too, but toaster strudels were like gourmet Pop Tarts. Yeah. And uh, so every time the weekend would roll around, we we would just like fucking oh man, time to eat some fucking toaster strudels, like some eggs, bacon, whatever. And my brother's a giant kid; he's huge. He's fucking. I think he was like six three by the time he was in Crazy. seventh or eighth yeah, grade. He's, tall. He's, he, he's a big boy. He needs a lot of food. And so I think I was, you know, in middle school, yeah. old enough to be like not a child. Yeah. And. Uh, so I go downstairs. My brother usually, usually slept in till like 1 p.m. on the weekends, yeah. which to me was like, what are you doing? <laughs> but now I'm like, no, growing. no, you were right. You were yeah. right, Devin. So I go downstairs at like 1030 or whatever when I wake up. I go and I open the toast strudels. There's one left thinking that there's like another box in there yeah. or whatever. I make it. I'm like, great. My brother comes downstairs at like 1 o'clock. Weekends are like magical things yeah. when you're in middle school, Hell yeah. in high school. And he opens the freezer and there's like nothing in it. And he just looks at me and he goes, and to my mom, she's in the kitchen too. And he goes, now there's nothing special for me to eat. <laughs> As I put like a bite of toaster strudel in my mouth. And I just <laughs> sat there and I went, <laughs> Wait, you cried? I like started sobbing <laughs> and my mom hysterically starts crying and my brother starts laughing and like she's like, no, it's okay. And there's just no consoling me. Like I just oh felt so horrible that I had eaten the last toaster strudel that is and brilliant. the look of pure sadness and disappointment on my brother's face. I couldn't get over it. Oh my God. I couldn't get over it. That's funny that you I cried and he started I laughing. I sobbed. I sobbed. And my Damn. mom was, I think my mom, you know, like made him some fucking bacon and pancakes or something. But yeah. like everything was fine. But I just, it like, it's one of those times where it's it shouldn't like I guess sure yeah I should be you should be upset but yeah. like you shouldn't be as upset as you are and I my heart fucking just dropped yeah. it was like it just hit me all in the feels yeah yeah the way that that girl dressing up and you being like oh yeah. <laughs> just hits everybody yeah. in the feels you know it's really funny because it's like indicative of your mindset at that age yeah those those stories it like takes you through. 
Everything's what your mindset so was. Everything's so incredibly, like, sad or embarrassing. Like, everything is just emotions on steroids. Yeah. It's just... It your hormones feels, are like, high body, I'm hormones. It feels so many feels. High feels. body, am hormones. Am hormones. Am actually hormones. Am actually hormones. All right, you got to talk about fucking a book that everyone should read. Book that everyone should read. Uh... I like the book called The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. I've never read that. It's a really good book. Um, I remember reading it when I was going into eighth grade. Yeah. I was going into eighth grade, and it was the summer before eighth grade, and I went to like a, a vacation with my, my, my bad buddies. We went to like New York, or, or it was like one of the Thousand Islands or something. Mm. Uh, and on the airport ride back, because this is how procrastination was. I bought it on the air, on before we got on the airplane. I read it on the plane, most of it at least. But uh, it was like a really kind of heartwarming, like go get him story. Um, it's you can't really you know you got to read. It's a good book. It's about this kid who you know he just kind of encounters all sorts of different people in in his quest to become whatever he's trying to become, which he doesn't even realize what it is. But it's a good book. I. It, you know, every time I think of what book I really loved, that book just comes to mind. I just enjoy the story, the the journey that he goes on. It's kind of cheesy, but it's a very simple story. But it, I think it's important mm. that that type of story. So you can't be distracted, but but no, you can't. Hey, <laughs> that's just popped up. I don't even have my who phone. Who runs Julian? I don't fucking Keats. know. Okay. This is why you can't have Twitter and podcasts and Ustream. There's I didn't know that was a rule. Things. It just popped up. Anyway, too that's my things. that's my book. What is your book? My book is, is, is stupid because I also read it like in middle school. But like I read plenty of fucking things in college and all of that that you know are meaningful or whatever. Yeah. And I guess it, it matters like what kind of person you are, what sort of experiences or life things you've been through. Because certain things speak to people more than other things. But for me, something that like hit me in the the brain was fucking All Quiet on the Western Front. Have you ever read that book? No, nope, I've never read that book. I've heard of it a bunch though. It's just you know about the fucking war about fucking world war i don't even fucking know one <laughs> yeah world war one and uh it it just fucking hits you in the fields you know how, what I mean? how old were you like 13 i 13. think 12 or 13 yeah. and uh, like i just remember i hated i'm sorry to anyone that likes these fucking books but i hated fucking tom sawyer to kill a mockingbird i hated like everything that you had to read hated it like i literally i know it's bad to say but i in so many ways destroyed my school's copy of to kill a mockingbird because i hated it so much but yeah i fucking i hate well they shove it down your throats yeah they tell you what you have to read and how you should feel about it but i feel like all quiet on the western front since it was about a war and it's like a first person perspective of the war they like there's no teacher that's gonna sit there and tell you how to feel. You feel how you feel. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I I just I felt a lot of things in that book, and I think it's really important, especially for a young person, to always put yourself in the shoes of of what your life could be. Like yeah. if there were a draft, if people have to go to war, that's very realistic and there's people that are currently at war and have been their entire lives and that's all that they know do you yeah. know what i mean yeah like there's not a day that goes by where i'm not like hey you know what's great that we're not we're not war. in a war-torn country yeah. full of terrorists and yeah. things like that that's yeah. spectacular yeah. and it just it's a the way that it's written is very yeah i don't know no I, I i i think uh i think it's a good point of and mice I think, and men Lady, i think i Lady. think uh <laughs> Uh, a problem I had with a lot of the English classes I took in high school was basically like what you just said, mm. that they tell you what to feel. And I felt like, uh, I don't know, you read um, Kafka. Mm. You read like the Metamorphosis. Right. Um, and you read these sort of things where there is literally so much that you can extrapolate off of based on your own mind. Yeah. Like this is all, you're reading it. 
everyone who reads it is going to think about it differently. Right. But for you to sit in a class with one person up front writing on a board telling you what telling you need to you think. Telling you what to fucking think. I just, I feel like that's that's probably a big reason why I never got huge into reading because I always felt like I had to be in a box. I right. could never read a book well, and be like, ever, this means. If you ever write a paper, that's not what the teacher is telling you, that you don't get a good grade. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just. Love the velveteen rabbit. Aw. Yeah. All right, let's fucking, let's extrapolate on that. Like, what's your favorite, like, story story? Or did you read a book, like, when you were a little kid? Like, I always used to, speaking of the Velveteen Rabbit, I did read that, but I always used to read this book called Pat the Bunny. It's literally, like, a furry insert into a children's Mm. book, and you turn the page, and you pat the bunny. Mm. I love that shit. That's cute. Coming from someone that did not become overly stimulated visually seriously i wanted to pat that motherfucking <laughs> bunny that was entertainment yeah. i'm gonna pat the bunny every single fucking night can we repat the bunny again yeah <laughs> for me uh i don't even know the fucking name of it hopefully you guys can help me it was about this dog with with uh, black dirty? spots dirty harry no no no. Oh, maybe i don't know stupid. no he had black spots he was a white dog with black spots but yeah. he would go out into the world and get so dirty yeah dirty harry right and he would come back as a black dog with white spots something dirty dirty something yeah that was mine oh, the hoppus. that was mine i know exactly what you're talking about that that book is fucking adorable amazing and, and that I, book made me so happy inside you know, i love that book you know a book i really liked when i was younger but then i grew up to have that sad like same sad sinking feeling we were just talking about the book are you my mother oh my god yeah I forget, <laughs> it's terrible i forget what kind of animal it is and the same way with Gonzo and the Muppets. It was sort of like, are you my mother? And yeah. it, this, this, if you give a mouse a cookie. <laughs> um, it was this, I forget what kind of animal it was, but it would go around just asking like a tractor, like a light, like a lamppost, a dog, a cat. Oh, are you my that. mother? Are you my mother? And I'm I like, this is that. fucking sad. Like I when I grew up, that. I'm like, this is the saddest book ever. Like you just don't know where you fit into the world. Are you my mother? And where Seriously. the fuck is my mother? Where the fuck is my mom? Yeah. That shit was so sad. It's That's like a really kind of cryptic message for you to be reading as a kid. It's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's serious. Deep. It's like dark and what deep. What if you're adopted? You'll never find out. Are you my mother? <laughs> Lamp <you> post. My <laughs> what is there to learn? I think the reason I like that dog book <laughs> is because he was so like expected to be this clean, yeah. uh, healthy, like normal Harry, dog. the dirty dog. See, I told you. Yes. I said dirty Harry, no, but it's Harry. But I think I think dog. a big like. Thank you, Sonia. He was expected to be this like average dog who stayed clean. Mm-hmm. But you know what? That's not him. He wanted to go. Roll Harry's going dirt. fucking go Harry, Harry man. Harry gonna be Harry. Harry gonna Harry. <laughs> Harry the, and Ain't he, nobody and, you know, can hold Harry like, down. He comes back and he's all black and dirty, yeah, and yeah, yeah. he's got little whites. I just I don't know. I love that. And also, uh, Miss Morgan's lawn. I don't know that one. Miss Morgan's lawn. Uh, it was about these kids who played ball in their backyards. And every time they hit a ball over their fence, they would go next door to Miss Morgan's lawn and they'd never get a ball back. Once it was in Miss Morgan's lawn, it was, you could kiss it Ms. goodbye. Miss Morgan sounds like a bitch. She's a, a grade bitch. A bitch. She's mean. And she, she would never give a ball back. So finally one time they went over there and they're like, oh, what the fuck? Where's all our balls? And there's just fucking balls everywhere and they're like miss morgan why don't you give us our balls back like all we want to do is play i'm Those sorry expensive and it gets down to the bottom of like the end of the story is like miss morgan is just crotchety because she's crotchety and they call her ass out and then they get the balls back but that's the moral of the story well i haven't read i it. feel like i haven't hold on i haven't read it in a long time but there. i could relate at the time because i was a kid kicking balls over the fence every yeah. single day yeah i feel like the moral of the story should have been uh, the person uh, who keeps throwing the balls over the wall, that person's parent is like, I'm not buying more balls. Tell me where they're fucking going. This shit's expensive. And then the kid's parent goes over there and says, excuse me, Miss Morgan, you have about fucking $3,000 worth of fucking balls in your yard. Can I get them back for my kid? Thanks. Fuck you. And then you just throw a ball through her window. That is a Molotov cocktail on it. Yeah. Molotov ball. Yeah. I feel stupid for bringing that book up and not remembering exactly how it comes to a conclusion. But I, I just Whatever. remember like just Miss Morgan's lawn. Like she, you go back there and there's balls everywhere. Balls and balls and balls. 
We had, but we we had balls everywhere in our backyard. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yep. Have you seen the book about the traveling dick? That's what Erdelin asks. No, I haven't. I don't know what that is. But the have you, are you my mother was a little baby bird that fell out of the nest. That makes sense. Are you my mother? That makes sense. That's so sad. Literally sad. What else, Julian? Have you uh, read the book Good Night Moon? Yeah, of course. Love that book. I read it last year. Because <laughs> I took an education class, and uh, they, that's we, adorable, <laughs> Julian. I read the whole thing. You took an education class. It is that that learning value and difference and whatever that was technically an education class. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I have a master's Good degree in counseling and education. I know you do. It counts for lots of things. It's, it's like three fucking things that degree. Sports psychology, counseling, through the school of education. Yep. You can do a lot of things. I can do whatever the dick I want. Like this. Get legs, miss. Podcast if I want to. Miss. 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 Get legs, miss. Get your fucking masters, miss. I said masters with a P. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Um, Well, I'm happy we did this. Yeah, me too. I'm happy we tried it out. And I love the idea of keeping our core fucking homies on Ustream while we do this because yeah. it helps it helps us move things along. It helps us give a little bit of interaction uh, while we try to... Because honestly, sitting here and trying to do a whole podcast, it, it's not going to be easy, you know, no, by any means. Sure. But uh, having you guys uh, here is is definitely awesome. So we're... I feel like next time we... Want, you know, once we record another episode of this, we will have our shit figured out technical-wise. Yeah. We won't have to stop. Uh, but we... If you are on board, I think we should do the Ustream thing again. Yeah, I think it's great. It's, it's really fun having Ustream. And for those of you uh, that are watching or listening, if you want to be a part of the Ustream, because we're going to, like, I'm not going to fucking shout the podcast from the mountaintops. I like it being sort of like a... Me too, me too. Whoever wants to yeah. find it and watch or listen finds it. Yeah. Um, but if you're listening currently, uh, if you want to be on the Ustream... I don't. When are we gonna do this? Probably Friday nights. Like I think Friday. I think Friday nights is when we're gonna report like the, po- late, the podcast. Probably. Or Thursday nights. I Thursday or Friday nights. Thursday yeah. Nights. I think both of those um, options. But follow Julian on Twitter at Julian Solomita. Right. Yeah. At Julian Solomita. S O L O M I M I T A. The only you, you, honestly there's I'm sixteen. I'm not probably gonna tweet it. There's sixteen people watching this. I'm pretty sure you all know my Twitter because otherwise I don't know how the fuck you found no, this. No, I was stream. saying that for the video on the podcast. Got it. <laughs> Very well. I'm Good. not telling you stream. I already know. That's why they're here. Yes, Julian Solomita on Twitter. I'll yeah. tweet out the link if you want to be part of the Ustream. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, this was awesome. Um like I said, every week we're gonna get better. Yeah. Some weeks we're gonna be short, some weeks are gonna be long. Sometimes we might even have someone here. No like rules. Just, yes. Yeah. We got to get our fucking friends in here. I want you guys to meet my friends and Julian's friends. Yeah, we got some funny friends. We have some really funny friends that are not YouTubers. They're yeah. not fucking what. They're just regular They're just ass human people, beings and they're epic. But they're just yeah. fucking really Rachel epic. on this podcast it, with a drink in her hand. That'd be yes. funny. Yeah. That'd be Mark. good. Mark. Mark. You guys need to see Mark. Okay. My Anyways, uncle. These names mean nothing. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for tuning into our fucking yeah. podcast. Thanks to our sponsors, uh, which is shit that doesn't really work right. Yeah, thanks for <laughs> thanks for your support. Shit that doesn't really work right. Absolutely. But hopefully there will be more of these, and this has been fun. And this is usually what we do over the weekend, right? I'm happy we're recording this for the internet to yeah, see. Yeah, this is what we we yeah. fucking do. We get yeah. a drink and we just sit here and talk. Yeah. So I'm a lot glad, to talk about. Glad that we did this. I'm excited to be back. Spectacular! We did it. J and J podcast. Fuck, ass, ass, it's ass, not J and J. It's Julian and Jenna. No, it's Jenna and Julian. You're first. Jenna and Julian. You're first. Well, alphabetically speaking, I'm first. <laughs> You're first in the podcast. All we actually have Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all set up. We just haven't yeah used, like released it. So all right, all right. Sounds good. We are hoping to do this every week, but who the fuck knows? Who knows? We will. No do expectations, our, no rules. No expectations, no rules. We, we're going to try to be as consistent as possible, but at the same time, living by our anti-rule rule. <laughs> cool. We love you guys. All right. Love you. See you guys next time. See you next week. Bye. Bye.